5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today for Women in Space. As we approach the May 27th first man launched of American astronauts on an American rocket from American soil since 2011, the last space shuttle, NASA has announced the next crew, including the first woman of Crew Dragon. Rick Potluck will have that report next from our Washington Bureau on About Space Today. Are you ready to fly away on a dream vacation? For cruises and all-inclusive resort vacations, call D&D Cruise and Tours at 877-747-8631. That's 877-747-8631. And see us on Facebook, D&D Cruise and Tours, where your dreams become a reality. So what is it like to live and work in space, and what should our next women astronauts expect? Well, astronaut Katie Coleman says it was like magic. I flew on the space shuttle twice, and I lived on the International Space Station for almost six months. People often ask me the same question, which is, what's it like in space? As if it was a secret. And space belongs to all of us, and I'd like to help you understand why it's a place that is magic for all of us. So the space station for me is the place where mission and magic come together. The mission, the work, our vital steps in our quest to go further than our planet, an imperative for understanding sustainability here on Earth. I loved being a part of that, and if I could have taken my family with me, I never would have come home. And so my view from the station showed me that we are all from the same place. We all have our roles to play, because the Earth is our ship, space is our home, and we are the crew of Spaceship Earth. The magic of what it's like to live and work in space from astronaut Katie Coleman. With more on our story is Rick Potluck from our Washington Bureau. David, NASA has announced that astronaut Shannon Walker has been assigned to the first operational crewed flight of the SpaceX spacecraft to the International Space Station. Walker will join NASA astronauts Michael Hopkins and Victor Glover, as well as Soichi Noguchi of the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, for a six-month expedition aboard the ISS. Here's Shannon Walker. Really, it all started when I was very, very young and watched the U.S. land on the moon for the first time. And so I was always interested in being part of it. And then ultimately being an astronaut to me means being an explorer, um, to explore the universe. So I thought, you know, being a physicist, wanting to understand the universe and then being an explorer to go out and, and see it firsthand was, was what I really wanted to do. Well, I went to Rice University in Houston for college. Um, I chose Rice University because I wanted to go to a school that was good in science and engineering. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to study, but I knew it was in that general area somewhere. Um, and I wanted to go to a smaller school. I wasn't really enamored by the uh, larger schools that we have in Texas. I was extremely fortunate that I was hired on to work at the Johnson Space Center um, right out of undergraduate school. So I was hired by contractor at that time that was the Rockwell Space Operations Corporation that had the contract to do the work in the Mission Control Center. So I was hired as a flight controller. So I did that for a number of years. And at that point, um, uh, after about three years, I decided I wanted to further my education. I only had my undergraduate degree at that point. So that's when I went back to Rice and got uh, my master's and PhD in space physics to sort of get a little bit off this planet, understand uh, some of the solar system. I did a number of other things, too, along the way before I became an astronaut. At one point, I was asked to do avionics integration with our Russian partners, which was really interesting. Experience as an astronaut has been absolutely fantastic. I've been able to do 
so many things that are just so exciting. Of course, um, I spent six months on this, nearly six months on the space station, um, living and working there, which was a fantastic experience. Um, leading up to that, at when, by the time I flew, we were winding down our shuttle program, and so I actually flew on uh, the Soyuz rocket with the Russians. What was very exciting to me about that is that I was actually trained as the co-pilot on, on the Soyuz, so I was fully trained, just like the commander, to do everything that needed to be done for launch, rendezvous, docking, undocking. We actually um, uh, relocated our Soyuz, so we briefly undocked from the station and went out to another docking port and redocked, and so I was trained in all of that. Uh, which was which was really neat because I'm just a little physicist uh, and NASA astronaut and being able to um, learn how to and being expected to know how to fly um, an international partner vehicle is, is quite something I think and having to do it all in Russian which is which kind of steps, steps it up a notch. Walker's mission will be the first of many rotational flights to the ISS. Walker, Hopkins, Glover, and Noguchi will launch aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon later this year. In other NASA news, more than 12,000 people have applied to join NASA's next class of astronauts, demonstrating a strong national interest to take part in America's plan to explore the moon and then take humanity to Mars. Applications were received from all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and four U.S. territories. NASA has a lengthy process to pare down the applicants before an expected introduction of the newest astronauts in the summer of 2021. Reporting from the Washington News Bureau, I'm Rick Potlock. And that's the news. For launch details, see us on Facebook at aboutspace.today. Thank you for joining me today, and be sure to follow us on Facebook and share our program with your family and friends. Join me next week for Go for Launch and meet Bob and Doug, who will fly this new and unique spacecraft called Dragon. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today.